All right, you guys, the first video of this summer that's going to be filled with game hype has launched today. We got a nice taste of some Xbox Series X games, a look at some uh, titles that are still, uh, some are early in development, but some are coming up very soon, and uh, we've got lots to talk about here. I liked what Xbox did, actually. They had a bunch of their executives beaming in from their homes, uh, so we got to see a little bit of their personal lives behind them, and uh, what they all exuded was a confidence and a a real excitement for the software that was on display and uh, it was coming in from all corners They started with a game that's being developed by one person. It's called Bright Memory Infinite from a studio in China, FYQD, and it's being uh, crafted uh, to look a little bit like something we're familiar with, like a shooter like Call of Duty, but then it's fused with like a bionic commando. We got a kind of an energy grip type thing. Uh, also brought up Metal Gear Rising for me a bit. And then there's a, kind of a Tenchu vibe. So he's the, you, you were playing as like this assassin type character, taking out all kinds of bad guys. And then this DeLorean shows up. So it's clearly a fusion of uh, interesting influences with some crazy weather effects in this, uh, this brief glimpse that we saw. Uh, but it looks promising. It looks like it could be a lot of fun. Certainly it looks like a killer portfolio project for an individual that can harness the power of this console. Next up on the docket was Dirt 5 from Codemasters, which had a uh, Forza Horizon kind of feel to it. Uh, definitely amped with colors and beautiful reflections. Stuff that we kind of expect out of Codemasters, to be frank, and I think any racing experience they're, they've all, they already look so fantastic in this current generation, so it's going to be pretty hard in a video form uh, to kind of see what the next gen of racing is going to feel like. But certainly everything moved beautifully and looked wonderful. What was revealed after these little video glimpses were shown off was a quick conversation with one of the developers talking about Troy Baker and Nolan North uh, being two characters and voice artists that are going to be a part of Dirt 5, which I think is going to infuse quite a bit of energy into this game. I'm already a big fan of the Dirt franchise to begin with. I like off-road racing. I like um, extreme weather racing, which this uh, this game kind of shows off as well. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But, you know, maybe not the biggest shock in the world that racing games are going to continue to look cooler as we move into uh, new hardware. We got a taste of a new game called Scorn, which is being crafted by a company called Ebb Software. Scorn looks like it is a, a crazy fever dream of uh, Guillermo del Toro. Uh, maybe he's been offered the chance to make an alien movie which actually sounds pretty awesome. Uh, I don't know what this gameplay is gonna be like. It might has a, a bit of a Souls vibe to it. Uh, it looks very creepy with really creepy characters, lots of squishy, gooey, you know, ex exoskeleton musculature, gross pustule type things going on. Um, not a place I'd like to hang out in, in real life. Uh, but could be fun in gameplay. And I actually like the the uh, zoom into the creature at the end and you think an eye is going to open up and then no, it's a big kind of flower squishy gooey thing. Looks very creepy. I think Scorn is going to be something to look out for, but we didn't really get a chance to see too much of what this game is going to be. A game that stood out for me is Chorus. This is a uh, title being developed by Fish Labs and Deep Silver. Uh, Fish Labs has done a lot of work with their uh, space shooting franchise Galaxy on Fire. It's been available on mobile and lots of other platforms now. Um, and they've done a pretty decent job with Galaxy on Fire. This obviously looks like it's going to be, you know, the next level of beautiful space shooters uh, with an interesting character, some really, really nice visuals. I, it looks so photoreal, it almost looked like video um, of, you know, tight shots of a woman uh, sort of waking up and then you see that she's got some kind of a connection to this drone or this spaceship. Uh, but then they quick cut to, to a bunch of, you know, firing and flying out in space kind of scenes. And I love all that stuff. Definitely what I've seen from Fish Labs with their Galaxy on Fire stuff is that they're fans of titles like Star Fox, but they want to take it in, in, into some interesting new ways. Also a little bit of the old Wing Commander kind of vibe. Um, I'm down for all that. I feel like that territory, that genre, that, that, that world of gaming, uh, frankly, isn't explored enough. And um, this could be some really interesting gameplay. It looks beautiful. 
I think the standout game in perhaps this whole presentation is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, which sounds like three games, but it's just one game. And it's a sequel to a game that came out a, a long time ago. I remember Tommy and I reviewing the first Vampire the Masquerade game, which was awesome, by the way. Uh, and this is, you know, an action RPG uh, first person experience and there's going to be a lot of supernatural powers and beautiful visual effects and crazy characters the idea of this demonic awful person uh, dancing around all of these posed grotesque humans that have been brutalized at the beginning was kind of hard to stomach all that um, it certainly evokes feelings of silence of the lambs uh, there's a sequence where we see the, this uh, couple dancing and then there's a vampire sort of reveal which reminded me a little bit of the opening to blade uh, it also has echoes and, and remnants of the vibe that you get from a game like bioshock I think this game is going to be something very, very special. Good trailer. Certainly not the best, you know, uh, just straight out visuals that we saw on display today. Uh, but I think it's a massive game. And there's lots and lots of characters and lots of story being introduced. So it looks like it's going to be incredibly immersive and a hell of a lot of fun. I can't wait for this one. Another game that really has me excited is Call of the Sea, which uh, looks beautiful. Looks like we get to travel to this gorgeous island. It was nice to see a nice shot of color because there was a lot of bleak imagery in this presentation, a lot of dystopia on, on display. So it was nice to kind of go to this tropical paradise and then go under the water and it looks like we're going to interact with mer people or Atlanteans or something like that. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of uh, another Guillermo del Toro shout out kind of connection to uh, the shape of water, you know, that kind of vibe. Uh, definitely looks esoteric and strange and uh, looks like it could be cool. Looks like it could be a great escape. There's an action RPG coming from a company called Neon Giant that's called The Ascent, which is maybe one of those types of titles that's easily forgettable. The game also looks like it's, you know, borrowing imagery from Blade Runner and lots of cyberpunk kind of stuff that we've seen before. But I love that stuff. I think it's still incredibly effective. Uh, it's, it's a top-down action RPG shooter-looking type game, so it kind of looks like it fuses stuff that I love from Blade Runner, including, like, mutants and, and cyborgs and lots of, you know, evil baddies to take care of with a little bit of a Smash TV kind of aesthetic because you're over top of everything and it looks like it's going to have a bit of a sense of humor injected into it as well. Great visual effects and nice flourishes. But certainly, you know, when you pull the camera back like this, it's not perhaps the best showcase for what this hardware is capable of. Still, looks like an intriguing game with a really cool setting. So I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for this one. Another creepy game that stood out in the presentation is called The Medium. It's being developed by Bloober Team out of Poland. They worked on uh, the Blair Witch game and The Observer. And uh, this game evokes a lot of Alan Wake and a lot of stuff that we've seen in games like Silent Hill. But they also made a huge statement that they're working with Silent Hill composer Akira Yamaoka in the presentation. Um, so it's going to have that vibe, which is great. I'm a big fan of Akira and his work. Uh, and the Silent Hill franchise has definitely left a huge mark on this industry. And, you know, in the, the game, we didn't really get a, a real sense of how it's going to play, but it certainly has a creepy vibe and a beautiful aesthetic, and um, it looks like it's going to haunt us and get into our heads and twist us up a little bit in knots, just like Silent Hill and games like Alan Wake do. So I think this is going to be a nice treat for survival horror fans out there. I'm looking forward to seeing how this one comes together for sure. Bandai Namco showed off a game called Scarlet Nexus, and although this game has kind of a generic title, it actually had a very energetic trailer, and it, it caught my attention for sure. It's this, uh, you know, futuristic dystopia. We've got uh, lots of color and lots of neon, uh, and, and it's beautiful. It definitely looks like it's popping off the screen like a 3D anime creation, which is cool, uh, but it's been corrupted by these plant-like creatures. You get monsters with flowers coming out of their heads, so it brought, reminded me a little bit of of, uh, Annihilation. And then we get a character that looks like he's popped right out of Akira or Astral Chain or something. Part of this special force that's going to take on all of these flower monsters. They've got all kinds of cool abilities and cool technology. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Lots of hacking and slashing and moving objects around with your mind. Uh, I'm psyched for this one. I hope it turns out to be as fun as it looks. 
There was a dinosaurs versus humans game, which I feel like we see dinosaurs fighting humans in a lot of console reveal trailers. I, I feel like we've gone down this road a few times before. <laughs> Which is fine, it's cool to see these massive beasts that used to roam the earth coming at us and all we've got are uh, machine guns and stuff. Uh, and it looks like we get to squad up and might this game might have a little bit of a Left for Dead kind of vibe uh, where it's, you know, your group against many. Um, and it looks like there's a lot of ripping and tearing by the beasts, which is uh, always going to be cool. It also has that kind of Turok mystique coming off of it. It also looks like the, you know, the combat and the conflict that we're going to get into within the game takes place on vast landscapes, um, which suggests maybe there's going to be, you know, more multiplayer as a part of this, or perhaps people will be able to play as dinosaurs as well in the game. Who knows? It was a little devoid of context, but it looks like it could be some serious fun. It's called Second Extinction Reclaim Earth. Lots of dystopia in this presentation today. Lots of uh, darkness, but there were some nice colors in the dinos. Also lots of color in uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon, which looks like a, an offshoot to the, to the sort of mainline Yakuza storylines. Uh, which, don't ask me to recount them for you. I just know that I really dig this franchise. I like uh, uh, the heavy drama fused with, uh, you know, some silly bursts of humor, um, lots of great characters and, and powerful moments, and it looks like all of that is a part of this one as well. You play a character that's betrayed, uh, and then you gotta fight back against the, you know, massive hordes of uh, gangsters and all kinds of other uh, creations. Look, a giant crab popped up in the middle of all this. Also an awesome back tattoo uh, and a really majestic bat. Is you know So, right there, those are the ingredients to something very special. Sega knows what they have with the Yakuza games. They're generally all pretty damn fun, and uh, this one looks like it's gonna be no different, and what they're promising is that this is uh, a launch title with the Xbox Series X. Can't wait. The big gun for the presentation, though, had to be Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We got some gameplay teases. We didn't get a whole bunch. It's not like we got to just watch a whole sequence play through, but we got to see some nice combat sequences, lots of hacking and slashing. Uh, we also got to see the incredible real-time details that we're seeing in the lighting and the reflections off of armor and things. This game looks absolutely gorgeous. Would expect no less though. Ubisoft Montreal are some of the best developers on earth and uh, they know how to harness powerful technology, which is exactly what the Xbox Series X is promising. Uh, and so there is a, you know, a predictability to this one being so majestic and so lush and gorgeous. And I love the whole promise of the mystery and the intrigue that it, we get to dive into. You know, we have a glimpse of Stonehenge in here. I think the developers have probably had a blast building off of all of that. And I think we're in for something special. I think this is honestly gonna be one of the biggest and the best games of 2020. I can't wait for this. It looks like it's gonna be extraordinarily special on a console with the horsepower of the Xbox Series X. We also got a tiny little taste of Madden 21. We had uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, Holmes come in and talk about being a part of this game uh, from his house and uh, uh, also itching to, to actually take the field. We didn't really get to see too much of the gameplay and of course he promised that a lot more is going to come uh, for Madden 21 but it was a nice kind of throwback to the roots of the franchise. He mentioned that the game franchise is older than him uh, which hit me right here because I remember buying Madden for my Genesis back in the day and blow was blown away by the gameplay because uh, one of my favorite video game memories, I don't talk about this very much, was Tecmo Bowl on the NES, which I played one New Year's Eve with a bunch of friends, and we just all had a blast. At it. In the middle of a great party, it was a great party, but we played Tecmo Bowl. And so I've always really dug video game football, and I've enjoyed the Madden games over the years. Very excited to see what EA Sports has got planned uh, for this next generation. This sets the tone. Whatever they're going to release on Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 is going to kind of set the tone for where uh, video game football and indeed video game sports are going to take us over this next five to seven years. So super psyched to see more about that. In general, I thought this was a pretty damn good presentation and I think a good kind of uh, entree into what we're going to be expecting from these little video reveals throughout the summer. I think we're going to see a lot more from Xbox. I think we're going to get something similar from PlayStation. Nintendo's cooking up stuff. EA is cooking up stuff. You know, uh, all the big publishers are going to be doing something similar. Um, and what's clear is that the, the developers have got a lot of tools to work with and uh, they're going to be building 
building us some exciting stuff. Now, interestingly though, as beautiful as these games look, it's hard to reconcile how much of an improvement the visuals are going to be and the gameplay is going to be compared to you know what's state of the art on this generation because there are some gorgeous games on xbox one x and playstation 4 pro right now uh, i think a lot of these games need to be experienced firsthand you know we need to kind of see what ray tracing means on our hd televisions and our 4k televisions and and uh get a real sense of uh, you know what these games feel like in our hands not just in little video vignettes like we got today but I, I do think that Xbox, um, in the face of uh, a lot of challenges that you know all the other publishers and the game developers around the world are going to be facing for the rest of this year, they did a pretty damn good job. They got me hyped. All of the hardware reveals and the you know the look at the console and the look at the new Xbox control, all that stuff is exciting. But it really takes the software to get me jazzed. I really want to see what the art is that people have been working on, not just in visuals, but the the this sort of connection that we're going to have to this software. The one thing that I will point out, and I, I've sort of alluded to this on Twitter and, and uh, also in this video, is that there's a lot of bleak work that's coming out because bleak stuff has been historically, um, not the low-hanging fruit, but the stuff that gets us uh, into conflict right away. And conflict is always a big part of uh, video game entertainment for sure. But we may crescendo on this bleakness. There might be a little bit too much dystopia for uh, this industry's own good. And it may be time for developers to kind of look at things from a different slant. It might, it might not all be about, uh, you know, blacks and grays and, and blood reds uh, and uh, being horrified and shocked by, y y you know, the heaviness that game developers can imagine. We need that for sure in games. Um, but we uh, also, I think, now in 2020 and over the next several years uh, need some escapism that might be a little bit more utopian um, and might be not necessarily lighter fare or cartoony or whatever, but may want to challenge some of the imagery and the storytelling that we received quite a bit of in this current generation and what looks like the early days of this next generation. Still, impressive work. Um, I, if I have to pick the standouts, definitely Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but I'm also super psyched for Scarlet Nexus, which looks, you know, ridiculously fun to play, uh, and Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, which I assure you is just one game. It has a very long title. Uh, that looks like it's going to be a blast. And uh, Call of the Sea actually has me intrigued. But uh, yeah, some very good stuff. Thank you, Xbox. And thank you all for watching. We will see you soon. And until then, play forever.